mentioned actually able uh, the first test uh, first initially of three that were scheduled two that took place so able tell us about the able test so shot able took place on July 1st 1946 at about 9 a.m. standard time bikini time which would be about 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time here in the United States the bomb was dropped from a B-29 codenamed Dave's Dream which took off from Kwajalein Coincidentally, its backup plane was the Enola Gay, commanded by Colonel Paul Tibbetts. Dave's Dream had been practicing the bombing run, and the plan was to drop the bomb over the battleship Nevada, which had been painted kind of a red-orange uh, with white gunnels and white gun barrels to make it stand out among the target ships. But the problem of the Mark III bomb came into play, and while well, the bomb detonated at 500, 518 feet above the target ships, it missed Nevada by about 710 yards, so about half a mile. The end result was it inflicted very little damage. It had a yield of about 23 kilotons, but because it didn't hit the large concentration, about 20 ships within a thousand yard uh, circumference, since it missed those target ships, it only sank about five vessels. It did sink the cruiser Sakawa, but more unfortunately, it sank some of the vessels with the critical instrumentation to actually monitor the ABLE test and gather information. The other downside to the ABLE test is from a media perspective, because we have to remember there's several hundred foreign press, American press, foreign observers, members of Congress came out to observe the test. We even had Soviet and Polish observers from Eastern Bloc. A lot of people came away thinking ABLE was a dud. You know, it didn't seem to sink a lot of ships. It didn't make a lot of noise. And it, now realize if they were about 10 miles away, we're seeing this over the horizon. But they said, that's it? You know, I, I thought the atomic bomb was to cause all this massive destruction and, and chaos. That's it? And so the reaction from a lot of the news articles coming out was that atomic bombs, they're not anything special. Perhaps the atomic bomb is just, it's a large bomb, but it's not necessarily anything special. What they're not aware of, however, is the massive amounts of gamma and neutron radiation released by this blast essentially would have killed all the crews aboard these target vessels. So even if you don't sink the ship, you've incapacitated the crew to such a degree that they no longer can participate in combat operations. I take it as soon as these bombs were dropped, and Abel being the first one, uh, how soon after the bomb went off were crews back aboard these ships examined? In the Abel blast, because it's an airburst, as I said, about 518 feet above the lagoon, the bulk of the fission products, the fallout, if you will, was went up into the atmosphere. So they were able to enter Bikini Lagoon fairly quickly after the blast. I want to say within 30 minutes to an hour, they actually went back into the lagoon to inspect the damage. In some cases, two firefighting crews went in to put out fires caused by the blast aboard some of the ships. Uh, the Carrier Independence, for example, had her flight deck torn apart. Uh, she had about 25 aircraft on board that were thrown off. But below decks, there were stores of aviation fuel and torpedoes. And these, unfortunately, the torpedoes detonated, the fuel caught fire, and so she burned for several hours afterwards. So crews raced back into the bikini to put out these fires. The water was really not radioactive. It, was, it had been irradiated, but it was not uh, long-standing radiation, if you will. So they were able to go in quickly, board these vessels in some cases. Uh, there was a submarine involved. They literally got her running and actually sailed the smashed up submarine around the lagoon. I want to say it was the USS Skate. In addition to that, the press came in, they grabbed photographs, all the while with signs saying, please, no smoking. So there was some understanding that this is bad, the radiation is there and it's a threat, but it, it's almost, a, almost consciously you don't want to believe it. You can't taste it, you can't feel it, you can't see it, you can't sense it. You can electronically detect it with Geiger counters. But here in two, Abel is an airburst, and the bulk of the fissionable products have gone away, gone up in the atmosphere and carried out the currents. So people don't quite grasp the danger yet.